Um, Jill mentioned that we have had watercolor pencils in the past and I just want to say that these watercolor pencils are a million times better than the old watercolor pencils. These actually blend. I was not a huge fan of the old watercolor pencils. I was, however, a big fan of the watercolor crayons and I did cry when those were gone. So let me talk a couple things about watercolor pencils. First, you might be thinking, why would I want to get them if I already have ink pads and I can watercolor? The biggest thing that I can say that, that I love about it is that I've got this many colors in this much space. I can add other colors into it, but it's easy for me. Like I keep these on my desk in a little cup and I have access to a lot of colors that I can quickly use instead of opening up each pad over and over again. So just the convenience right there is really nice. I am gonna show you a few different cards and a few different techniques. The first thing I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna be using the colors of Real Red, I'm gonna use Coral, Daffodil, and Pumpkin, and I'm gonna be using the Aqua Painter. This paper I'm using is the, it's called Shimmer Paper with the little, yeah. So I like that the shimmer works really good with the pencils. On this one, I'm just going to add some colors. Oh, do you like my fingers? <laughs> Who needs a manicure when we've got ink, right? <laughs> So I'm just coloring all around, and you could do with whatever colors you wanted to do, that doesn't matter. And then using my aqua painter, I'm just gonna start blending them. Do you know what, it's not better, I'll say that, because I like, and I do have somewhere we're gonna be using the watercolor paper, just different, Different techniques I like for different reasons. Um, the shimmer paper, I love, the, it's just a really crisp, clear paper, which is nice. You have to, I think that when you're using the watercolor paper, that tends to work a little bit better when you're using more color, so sometimes using your ink versus the, the pencils. For the pencils, I do prefer the shimmer paper better. So just really easy doing a background like that. Then pretending like this is dry because it's gonna take too long to dry, we don't wanna take, take too much time. I just took a bold stamp, you could do any bold image or word, put it in your archival ink or your stays on ink. Oh wait, stamp, and there you go, you've got an easy card. So that's just way simple, don't mind the little ink that I accidentally dropped it in my ink after I stamped it and I was not gonna redo it, so that's really easy. Another thing is, is notice how this one's still a little bit lighter. Sometimes after they dry, I'll go back in and add just a little bit more in areas to darken it up a bit. Now we've got two different papers. I'm gonna show you what they both look like. So here is our glimmer paper and this is our watercolor paper. See how easy it is to just have all those colors right there? This, I'm just going to kind of mess around and add some different colors in. You don't have to be too exact because the nice thing is, is you're going, I'm gonna do it on both of them, is you're gonna be blending them after. So this is Old Olive. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of, this is Bermuda Bay, which sounds kind of weird to put in here, but we're gonna work with some of the colors that we have, and a little bit of Pacific Point. Sometimes when you're doing these, don't be afraid on watercoloring to experiment with different color choices. Sometimes I'll look at them like, oh, those won't work together. But when they blend, they can turn out really pretty. And sometimes they turn out really ugly. It's just a chance to take. <laughs> Had that happen too. Trial and error. It is just a small piece of paper. And you know what? You're going to go through other ones. But some of those, some of the experiments I've tried, I'm like, oh, that was fun. Okay, so one thing is when you're blending, if you have a the watercolor paper, it blends easier. It's just the nature of the paper just allows the colors to swirl around easier. This was watercolor paper. So this one will still blend, but it, it doesn't have the same, how would I, what would be a good word for it? It just, it doesn't incorporate quite as nicely, but there is a convenience of shimmer paper is, it's easy, it's also cheaper. Then around the outsides, I'm just going to add some other colors. This is Rich Razzleberry. We're gonna add some Melon Mambo, and maybe I'll put just a teeny bit of coral in there, just in a few spots, and just a little bit of yellow. Okay, so I tend to do that a lot. I, when you watercolor, make sure you have a paper towel because you wanna clear it off, and I, if you guys see, keep seeing me go on my hands, it's because I'm always wanting to see how much water's coming out. It's just, I don't know, I like to know what, what I'm working with because you can change how much water is coming out. And if there's too much water, you just clear it out and wipe it off the side. See how cool those colors all start to mix together? And if you want it to look more blurry around the edges, 
make sure you add a little bit more water and it will start to blend out more. I put some of the yellow in there, some yellow down there. And as that dries, I just added that onto a card that looks like that. And see how those colors start to look really cool together? So that's another easy card you can do. Another technique is with embossing. Now on this one, I pre-embossed. I took the Rose Wonder Stamp set and I took the big stamp out of there and I embossed it in white onto the glimmer paper. Now I'm not going to do this whole card, but I'm going to show another technique I like to do. I'm going to do my rose using Bermuda Bay and Pacific Point. And it doesn't matter how exact you color this on, we're just getting some colors in here. And just kind of mix those in together. Then we're going to start blending them in. Now if you're doing like say the rose card, and you're wanting to do two colors, it's kind of cool when you pick a darker color to start in the middle, so a lot more Pacific Point to the middle, and then fading it out as you go further away where it's got more of the um, Bermuda Bay, and it just kind of adds some cool depth and interest. But see how easy that is? It's gonna resist it wherever the embossing is, so you don't have to worry about staying in your lines too much because it's not gonna stick wherever you've embossed. And the nice thing about watercoloring is, is if you get out of the lines, that's part of watercolor's charm too. And then I did the leaves using the old olive and Bermuda Bay also. So I'm only doing part of my rose here so you can don't watch me color the whole thing. And as I finished that, I ended up with this. And then this is just the gray around the outside. Now, some of these spots where it's a little bit darker after I came in, let me show you what I did. I colored this all with watercolor and if there's spots that I wanted a little bit darker I would just add a little more color or I could even come in with my inks and just add a little bit more to add a couple highlights to some of the areas. Does that make sense? So don't be afraid that just because you've got watercolor pencils that you have to be exclusive to watercolor pencils. By all means use these as like your fast part and then add more of your watercolor, your regular stamp pads for more versatility to get more colors or to use the exact same colors you have but because you want to add more depth or a little bit darker coloring. And then I did the same with the edges here. I just added some watercoloring along the edge of my um, the happy birthday little sentiment. So pretty cool. It makes it look really pretty. I think when you add watercoloring it just looks more artsy fartsy and I like it. <laughs> All right. Now a couple of people asked about a card that I had hanging up that looked like this and it makes it look like you just all did it yourself. Well I'm going to show you how you can fake people out and you can be like check me out I'm a watercolor and an artist but you're really not. This is how you do it. So get your paper. Once again I'm using the shimmer paper. I'm going to be using beautiful you because I love it. And I'm using crumb cake ink. This one's a different one from Beautiful You, but stamp it up. Stamp it off twice. And stamp it on. So your image is going to be really light on there. So I'm going to do her dress with this yellow or whatever color you want. I did yellow. Making it a little bit darker along my left edge just because I want that to be kind of where my shadow side is. A little bit on her hat. And then I'm going to come in with my pumpkin pie and I'm going to add just a little bit more color. Even though I want the dress to be yellow, I want there to show like there's some shadowy area to get a little bit more depth. Use my aqua painter to start blending those all in. For her skin, we didn't have a fabulous skin color and since I had already stamped in the crumb cake, I just used just a little bit of crumb cake to just kind of accent where her legs are a little bit. So it's going to kind of have a look that like you hand drew this in. We've got some espresso for hair if we want to add a little bit more color in there. I'm telling you that's a nice thing about watercoloring is it's really forgiving. Now one thing that I tend to think when I'm when I am watercoloring is I like to visualize the sun coming in. For me right here I was visualizing the sun coming in from here which is why I added that slightly darker around this side of her dress, this side of her hat. 
little things like that really do make a big difference because if you don't want it to be super dark over here and super dark over here it's always just picture wherever you want your light to be I just go there's my sun today or there's my sun and then I try to focus my shadows in that direction and it really helps out with making things look a little more natural and then I also shot it around the outside there's that girl here she is standing in the rain this one I added a little bit more water so it even had and I kept this one much looser see like this one I kept in the lines more this one I added more water so it was even more of a watercolor look they're really easy really forgiving but just making sure you stamp off twice with your light color and I'll give you a really good good guideline here's one final card I'm not going to demo for you but this one I just wanted to show this is one where I added a lot more water so the color started to bleed more and then after I added the water and after it had all the way dried this is one that I came back in after and I darkened areas up when you're trying to find areas to highlight try to find areas that are close to details like in the corners will really help add some things like I added some around the flowers around some of the leaves but not around all the leaves so that it kind of added some cool dimension but like I said don't be afraid to intermix your pads with your pencils but you will find that your pencils will become a huge time saver it just makes it really convenient and if you don't all walk away with pencils I will feel as though I failed you because they really are so nice to have thanks guys